Welcome, Erin. Thank you. To another episode of Between Two Brokers, the world's best podcast. Mm -hmm. um, today, I want to talk about a couple of things. Like, we've had a little bit of drama going on at the Smith Spencer. It's true. Which, you like that, don't you? No. I don't know. I like it when it's, you know. I don't like chill. it. So, Too busy um, for drama. That's true. So, why don't we start... You tell the story about the con artist. Okay. So we have two good stories. We have a con artist <laughs> story, and then stay tuned for our Instagram account being shut down. Also very interesting. I don't even know where to start with this guy. Um, he, this con artist, reached out to um, two girls on our team, Haley and Kaylin, their sisters, and um, he said, I've got... Um, some 1031 exchange money, and I want to invest it in um, a beach property in Charleston. Um, they hopped on the phone with them, talked about it. You know, I gave them a list of questions to ask because the 1031 exchange is a little bit, it, it makes the deal a little trickier than a normal um, purchase. Um, he said he had $6 million to spend, which... Um, can get you a good bit down here. Mm -hmm. um, they, I, when I, they called me after their first initial phone call with him, and I said, well, what, how did he answer these questions? And they go, you know, um, there was a baby crying in the background, and so he talked a lot, but then when we would ask questions, the baby would cry, and there, he wouldn't get to the answer. Should have been red flag number one. Mm -hmm. We didn't catch it. Okay, so, and, and Haley and Kaylin are mm -hmm. excellent, but they have, they are newer agents. They're so newer there's, agents. There's, there's a lot to learn. Some um, red flags that might come up for somebody that was a little bit more experienced. Yes. One of the questions was, how did you find us? And he just said, on a list of realtors that were given to me, which, yeah, what? Who, who has a list who? of realtors? By whom? Yeah. Because I need to thank this person also mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. referring me. Um, so... You know, we uh, do a Google search on him, read about this company. Um, he seems to be legit. He, I asked for proof of funds. Um, he sent it to them. We scheduled several appointments. We're ready to go. I, um, I was showing them the girl. I was showing the girls and this and this guy um, an off-market property. So um, I met them, and as soon as he got out of the car. We kind of looked at each other, didn't want to make it obvious, but he was not exactly the same person that we saw on the website for the name and the company that matches who he said he was. Did you get sick to your stomach right away? No, um, because I was like, you know, it's been several days since I looked at the picture and he looks kind of like him. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it's like. <laughs> he didn't look like a con artist. <laughs> your picture on our website is seven years old. <laughs> Fuck you. I like me at 35. Um, he didn't look like a con artist, but he didn't look like he had six million bucks either. Mm -hmm. You know, he was dressed very casually. Um, he was driving a brand new truck that did have temporary South Carolina plates, and he was, was from stolen? North Carolina. Um, anyway, we show the house. We go over to the next one, and... Um, show that one and then I'm like okay I'm departing they are he's following them to the next house and Kaylin texts me a screenshot of the guy on the website and says does this look like the guy that we're showing today and I said no it does not and then I start thinking about all these red flags that have happened over the last couple of days and so the guy on the website I go I'm just going to call him and see if he's in Charleston right now Schmoopy loves some detective work I do yes that's true mm-hmm um, I don't love drama, but I do love Dateline. <laughs> um, so I call him, and of course, it's just his company phone number on there. And I get the secretary. I go to the voicemail, blah, blah. I call back, and I was like, I need to speak to this man. So she forwards me to his cell phone, and I can tell he's driving. So I'm like, oh, shit, maybe it is him because he's driving to the next house. And I said, are you um, in Charleston right now? He goes, no, I think you have the wrong phone number. And I go... I need you to hear me out. Before you hang up on me, hear me out. And I say, there is somebody here that's pretending to be you, that is pretending to have a lot of money, 
and that is looking at houses with my girls right now. Um, and I said, this is what he told us about himself. And he goes, I can't believe you're fucking calling me right now. He said, this man has infiltrated my company's wealth management or my family's wealth management company. We've been looking for him. He was able to somehow get his name through the secretary of state added onto a number of their LLCs. He, that truck he was driving, he purchased in the name of their LLC. He, um, knows a lot about their family. Like I was sharing emails that he sent about his, uh, supposed grandfather and, uh, that he was retiring and this portion of the company was going to be with him and his uncle so-and-so and all this other stuff. So I'm on the phone with this guy and he's like, all of that is true. Like, I don't know how this man knows it, but it's all true. And he goes, you need to call the cops. Um, so Charleston PD pissed me off to no end. I got routed through, I don't know how many different offices because the girls were currently in Berkeley County showing a house in Wando, but I was in Mount Pleasant, which is in Charleston County. So I needed to, to file the report here, but you know, he was only wanted up in Wilmington, which is a whole different state. Mm -hmm. And so I probably spent an hour on the hour, hour and a half on the phone getting passed around from different officer to officer. And I finally just called the guy back and I said, listen, I don't have time for this. I said, if you can handle it and, you know, contact the Wilmington Sheriff's Department and get them to contact Charleston, it'll probably be a lot more streamlined. And he goes, oh, the sheriff's a family friend. I'll handle it. Like, okay, these people got mega money. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, he, he just, and he keeps calling me. He calls me back to talk about, to just keep telling me all the shit that this guy has done to their family and all he's stolen. He bought like farm equipment in Texas. He's got warrants out or warrants out for his arrest in Texas, but they aren't whatever enough to cross state lines. Mm -hmm. So they don't mean anything here. Um, and all the while he is out with Haley and Kaylin looking at houses and I'm wondering if this guy is violent. So I text them. I'm like, I need you to get a picture of him. I need you to get a picture of his license plate and I need you to get the fuck away from him. Make up some excuse. Um, I'll call you and you can pretend that I'm the agent for the next house, um, canceling the showing, but you need to get away from this man. So they do all that. They get the pictures. I send them up to this guy in Wilmington and he was like, that's him. He sent me a picture of his license, totally wrong name. Um, but it's just, it's creepy what a mastermind this guy is mm -hmm. and how he was able to like get into this company and steal so much from these people. Mm -hmm. So long story short, the, um, Wilmington police want to make a move on this guy and they asked us to set up a sting. So where we're going to say, there's a house on John's Island that we think you should see. Um, can you meet us there tomorrow at three o'clock? Um, cause he was supposed to leave town the next day. Um, and we wouldn't be there, but the cops would be there when he drove up. Um, so I talked to the sheriff's department up in Wilmington several times. And then ultimately the Charleston guy called me and he goes, I've been in communication with the Wilmington people. He said, but technically this guy hasn't committed any crimes in our jurisdiction. So there's nothing that we can do about it. Mm -hmm. And so I let the real James Bond, making up a name, um, up in Wilmington know that it wasn't going to go down. And, I mean, he's obviously very upset because this man is a criminal. He was sending me, like, his criminal record. This guy has got a rap sheet for days. Very good at his job. Mm -hmm. It was just, like, just an insane couple of days dealing with this uh, criminal. He's was just crazy. so I mean I think the takeaways so I always say if it seems too good to be true it is not it probably is it is you know and it's like you you have to be really good at asking questions um and the other thing that I think was really good with the girls just kind of being newer was like the fact that you were there with mm -hmm. them 
So if you are a real estate agent, it doesn't matter if you're male or female or old or young or whatever. If you don't know somebody, you should always have somebody there with you. The good thing about the girls is it's the two of them, but they also kind of like share a brain. So I don't know if it's like really effective. (laughs) I think they need to have somebody else there with them. So when you're meeting somebody for the first time, like you have to meet them at the office or you have to, you know, you have to kind of do a little bit more due diligence. And I think we should have asked, yeah, I think we should have asked him to send us a picture of his driver's license, Mm -hmm. you know, just to say we need to know who we're working with because yeah. I mean the the financial statements looked totally legit we yeah. were able to look up his family on this website and you know it's like yeah he does have a lot of money yeah. and he sounds like he's this age and he knows so much about the family and the business it was um he spends a if he were to put that much effort into a legitimate job I'm sure he could be good at something because mm-hmm. he put a lot of effort into being a criminal that's crazy yeah on to our next dramatic story the smith spencer charleston instagram account was shut down um what happened it's in it's in a black hole we learned the hard way that um one of your favorite things is uh, i don't ask for permission i ask for forgiveness Mm -hmm. and we learned the hard way that um that works until it doesn't (laughs) <laughs> I think it works 99% of the time. Those are good odds. Well, that 1% was a punch in the gut. Well, and it wasn't, uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry, but it wasn't us. Like we have a, somebody that handles our social media and like, we're, how are you and I running a business and selling real estate and supposed to be responsible for like what? an Instagram post a day? No way. Right. And so, um, you know, obviously there are rules and we don't keep up with them and nor do I want to. I like, I think, you know, it's like anything, you know, my attitude is like when you hire a professional, it's their job to handle that mm-hmm. for you. Like know about the rules and regulations and basically, um, a local photographer was upset about photos being posted and flagged our account a couple of times, which we were unaware of and um, eventually got it shut down. And then I don't really understand why, but then begged for forgiveness later and wrote us a thank you note and said he was sorry. So I don't really understand the point of like getting it shut down and then now trying to get it back up. But that's exactly what happened. And, um, in the meantime, um, we had a bunch of people telling us that there was this like rival boutique women owned brokerage that was trying to get us shut down. And when I first was told this, I got like, I got so sick to my stomach cause I just couldn't believe it. Like these and are we people consider them friends. That, yeah. Yeah. People that I definitely think are friends. And then you know, the next morning, I think the first thing I did was call you. And Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, like, this is bullshit. Don't get wrapped up in the gossip and fodder. Like people are trying to create drama. And I'm not going to talk shit about anybody. I'm not going to allow anybody to get involved in our stuff. If anybody asks you about the Instagram account, we just tell them that, you know, the facts that we know that there were photos that were reported, it was copyright thing. And, you know, it got shut down. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, we found out later that these people had nothing to do with our account getting shut down. And um, so I think you have to be really careful about that. I just, you know, which brings up another point, like, we do from time to time, there's one agent that you and I um, kind of talk shit about on the podcast, but I think we need to stop, uh, you know, just like, just amongst each other talking shit about each other. Cause I really like when I, I think about some of my favorite people to talk to. And one of the reasons I love my jobs because I love the agents that we work with and I love our peers and I love the majority of the top producing agents in Charleston. There are like two people I can think of that I don't want to call mm-hmm. out of 200, mm-hmm. you know, everybody else. I'm just like, I think they're awesome and they're cool. And, um, you know, I just, I, I always tell the girls not to allow any like shit talking or gossip or any kind of like cattiness or anything to come through these doors. And I think this was like a prime example of somebody trying to like just create this 
unnecessary drama and um i'm glad we didn't fall for it because yeah. it's stupid and stay out of our fucking shit <laughs> you know like like this is it's me and aaron's problem and if you're not here to help us solve it then stay out of it um in the meantime you know we lost six years of instagram posts and followers and a bunch of hard work mm-hmm. um so if you don't follow us Please look at what's our new handle, Smith Spencer Real Estate. Smith Spencer Real Estate. Yes. Please follow us and share. We are rebuilding from zero. Yep. We had more than 6,000 followers, and our goal is to be the number one, um, so, you know, real estate brokerage with the number one social media in Charleston for sure. So please help us get there and just know that this is an issue. You're running your own campaign. We had another issue last week unrelated to social media, but with print advertising where a photo was posted and it really upset somebody. So if you're doing ads or posting, like you need to be aware of the the rules and just understand that if you don't own that photo or don't have permission to use that photo, that you're subject to, um, you know, having, having a lot of problems. I mean, yeah. just aside from having your Instagram account taken down, I would think 99% of the people in the real estate business, whether it's agents or photographers or any other, uh, industry that supports real estate agents is of the mindset that, you know, sharing is in the spirit of what we do. Oh yeah. But you can't assume that a hundred percent of the people are. And so. Right. Like why wouldn't you want the photo of your listing shared all over social media? The most eyeballs possible. Well, and if you're a photographer, don't you want to be tagged and don't you want your photography to be everywhere? And if you have a listing, don't you want it everywhere? You just can't assume that everybody thinks like you do. Yep. A lot of people, I mean, we, we have a podcast because all we're doing is like giving away free advice and free information about how we do things. But most people, a lot of people are um, very closed off about that kind of stuff. And that's not our attitude, but so that's that. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate all of your support with the podcast. Don't forget to email any questions, comments to podcast at smithspencer.com. Rate, review, and subscribe. And tune in next time. Thank you.